Introduction Finding the Flow on the Mat Jiu-Jitsu and Me An Eternal Dance Hello, Jiu-Jitsu enthusiast, instructor, or aspiring teacher. First and foremost, allow me to introduce myself. I am deeply passionate about Jiu-Jitsu, and like you, I've undergone an incredible journey within this realm of techniques, strategies, and above all, self-awareness. I vividly remember the first day I stepped onto a mat. I was a blend of nervousness and curiosity. Initially, it was all about learning the techniques, how to properly execute an arm lock, how to position myself for optimal control. But something happened along the way. I began to notice that there were moments during training or in a match when something magical happened. I would enter a state where all distractions vanished, and I became one with the activity. That's when I discovered what psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi calls flow. The aha moment. Anyone who has experienced the state of flow knows how powerful it can be. It's as if time stops. Every movement connects to the next almost perfectly, and there is a sense of harmony and complete engagement with what you're doing. In my case, this not only improved my performance in jiu-jitsu, but also began to affect other areas of my life. I wanted to understand what exactly was happening, so I delved into the studies of psychology, Taoism, and Buddhism. The more I read, the more I saw connections with what I was experiencing on the mat. Ancient philosophies of Taoism and Buddhism, for instance, already explored similar states of presence and immersion, states that you might call ancestral flow. Why this course? So why am I sharing all this with you? Because I believe that understanding and activating the state of flow can be an invaluable tool for any jiu-jitsu instructor. Besides improving your own performance and enjoyment in the sport, you can help your students experience the same benefits, thereby creating a more effective and harmonious training environment. In this course, we will embark on a journey together that combines the best practices of jiu-jitsu with principles from psychology and ancient wisdom from Taoism and Buddhism. I want to share with you the techniques, strategies, and insights I have gathered over the years to help you become the best teacher you can be. So, take a deep breath and get ready to enter the Flow Jiu-Jitsu training system. I'm excited to accompany you on this exhilarating journey. Shall we begin? Who am I? As an instructor, a 25-year journey in the art of teaching Jiu-Jitsu. Hello, my name is Helio Damiani Jr., and I have a deep love for martial arts, particularly Jiu-Jitsu. For over 25 years, I've been dedicated to studying and teaching this wonderful art form, which is much more than just a simple combat technique. It's a philosophy of life. Over the years, I've been through various schools and have trained with many different instructors, absorbing not just the techniques, but also the subtleties that make jiu-jitsu such a complex and beautiful art. But something remarkable happened on this journey. I encountered the state of flow. Flow is a mental state where you feel completely immersed in the activity you are performing. It's a transcendent experience of complete focus and engagement, where everything seems to fit together almost perfectly. The first time I experienced this state was eye-opening. It was as if a new dimension of jiu-jitsu opened up to me, and I realized that this martial art could be seen not only as fighting, but also as a form of artistic expression. Committing myself to understanding this state led me to study aspects of psychology and Eastern philosophies like Taoism and Buddhism. Incorporating these ideas into my teaching 
I noticed that my students also began experiencing significant benefits, both in their technical abilities and their overall well-being. This discovery transformed my teaching approach. I began to see each class not just as a space for teaching combat techniques, but as an environment to explore the union of mind, body, and spirit. A space where my students could not only learn to fight, but also to express themselves authentically and artistically through their movements. I view jujitsu not just as a sport, but as an art form, a medium for self-expression and self-discovery. And it's this perspective that I aim to share with my students, so they too can find their own flow and, through it, reach a new level in their practice and in their lives. I firmly believe that this more artistic view of jujitsu can open up new possibilities, not just for me, but for anyone willing to embark on this journey. So, if you are ready to dive deeper into this art and discover a new way of understanding jujitsu and yourself, I invite you to join me on this exciting adventure. With respect and gratitude, Helio Damiani, Jr. Chapter 1. What is Flow? The Magic of the Moment Hello again, and welcome to the chapter that delves into this mysterious and fascinating thing we call flow. Before we dive into the more technical and philosophical aspects, let me share a personal story that might encapsulate what this flow is all about. A match to remember. It was an ordinary training day. My hands were beginning to ache, and I could feel the sweat trickling down my back. I was facing a strong opponent, someone who always gave me a tough time. At that moment, for some reason, everything started to change. The noise around me vanished, my mind stopped racing with thoughts, and instead, I was there, fully immersed in the moment. I felt every move of my opponent, every breath, every grip attempt, and almost intuitively, I knew how to respond. I was not afraid to make mistakes. I was not thinking about the next move. I was simply there, flowing. When the match ended, I didn't even know how I had achieved the win, but everything seemed so clear and yet so beyond words. The concept of flow. So, what exactly is flow? Well, the term was popularized by psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi and is defined as a mental state of operation in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of the activity. In simpler terms, it's as if you go into autopilot mode, but in a very positive way. You lose track of time, forget about yourself, and all that matters is the task at hand. In the context of jujitsu, this could be a match, a series of technical movements, or even physical exercise. Why is this important? You might be asking, Okay, this sounds nice, but why should I care about this as a jujitsu instructor? The answer is simple. Achieving the state of flow can not only elevate your performance and that of your students to a new level, but also make the entire teaching and learning experience more rewarding and meaningful. Imagine having a class full of students who are so engaged that they forget the outside world, focusing only on the present moment. That's what flow can do for you and your students. And the goal of this course is to show you how to get there step by step, technique by technique, and philosophy by philosophy. So, prepare to put aside distractions, open your mind and heart, and dive into the incredible world of flow. This is just the beginning, and I'm thrilled to be on this journey with you. Shall we move forward? Chapter 2 But what exactly is flow? the mind beyond the ego and the gateway to optimized performance. Hello again, lovers of the gentle art. 
As you know, our first dive was into the fascinating surface of the flow state. Today, we're going to delve even deeper into this ocean of possibilities. One could argue that many of us have experienced flow at some point, but do you truly understand what this state is and how it manifests in our psychology? When the ego steps off stage, the first time I experienced the flow state on the mat, it was as if a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Suddenly, I wasn't concerned about winning or losing, about what others were thinking of me, or even about my own self-image. The ego, that little voice in your head that keeps you constantly preoccupied with I, simply vanished. The importance of the here and now. The flow state thrusts us powerfully into the present moment. This is crucial because in reality, the now is all we truly have. It's no wonder that both Buddhism and Taoism emphasize the importance of the present moment. When you're in flow, past and future become irrelevant. Your mind is focused solely on what's happening now. The universe's stage is the present moment. The common view is that life is a timeline, extending from the past through the present and into the future. But think about it. Have you ever lived, or will live at any time, other than the now? The answer, of course, is no. The past is a memory, and the future a projection. Both exist only as thoughts in your head. The now is the only tangible reality. My awakening moment on the mat. I vividly remember a training session where everything seemed to go wrong. My mind was wandering thinking about past mistakes and future challenges. I was being dominated and submitted at every role. And then something clicked. I decided to put all my attention on the present moment, on each breath, on each move from my opponent, and on each ounce of pressure in my grip. The result was magical. Not only did my performance dramatically improve, but I also entered that coveted flow state, the now as the gateway to flow. The flow state is essentially a state of hyper-presence. When you are fully immersed in the present moment, your brain has the capacity to process information far more efficiently. This is crucial in jujitsu, where every second and every move can be the difference between being submitted or emerging victorious. The Tao of Now Taoism, one of the philosophies we explore in this course, puts a strong emphasis on the now as a state of balance and harmony with the Tao or the natural way of things. Taoist wisdom teaches us that by focusing on the now, we can act in accordance with the natural flow of the universe, which is the essence of Wu Wei. And in doing so, we enter a state of efficacy and grace, which is flow Buddhism and mindfulness. Buddhism also teaches us the importance of mindfulness, which is essentially the practice of being fully present. When we are mindful, we are more capable of seeing things as they truly are, without the veil of our projections or judgments. This gives us a huge advantage on the mat, where clear perception is critical for success. Conclusion the essence of many Eastern philosophies and practices, and modern science concurs, is that the now is all we have. If you want to tap into the flow state, hone your skills in jujitsu, and dare I say, live a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Learning to inhabit the present moment is one of the most important skills you can develop. So the next time you step onto the mat, leave the past and the future at the door. Bring all your attention to the here and now. You might be surprised at the power this simple act can unlock. See you in the next class, and until then, stay present. Chapter 3 The Neuroscience of Flow Without getting too deep into scientific jargon, 
the flow state is supported by a shift in brain activity from the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of the brain, to more primitive areas that control muscle memory and intuition. This is often accompanied by a release of neurochemicals like dopamine and endorphins, which not only make you feel good, but also boost your performance. The trigger, the balance between challenge and skill. To enter into flow, one crucial condition must be met. Whatever you're doing must be challenging enough to require your full attention, but not so difficult that it's overwhelming. It's like finding an opponent who is slightly better than you, but not so much that you stand no chance. This sweet spot is what many refer to as the zone, and it's where flow occurs most easily. Flow and Jiu-Jitsu, a perfect match. The beauty of Jiu-Jitsu is that it offers countless opportunities to enter into flow. Each role is a unique dance of moves and counter moves, a chance to lose yourself in the moment. Additionally, Jiu-Jitsu provides us with instant feedback. If you make a mistake, you'll know immediately, and this allows for a type of quick learning and adaptation that is conducive to flow. Conclusion Understanding flow is not just theory. It's a practical tool that can revolutionize your approach to jujitsu and life in general. And the most exciting thing is that this is just the beginning. As we advance in this course, we will explore specific techniques and methods for inducing this powerful state of being. I'm looking forward to sharing more of this exciting journey with you. Until the next class, keep the flow. Chapter 4 the Neuroscience of Flow How Your Brain Transforms at Peak Performance Hello, Jiu-Jitsu Warriors. In our last class, we briefly touched on the neuroscience of flow, that state of grace and efficiency we all seek. Today, let's delve deeper into this fascinating topic. Don't worry, I'll strive to make the science accessible, because understanding what happens in our brain during flow can truly change your game. Cerebral Gear Shift The Prefrontal Cortex Firstly, it's important to understand that when we enter the flow state, there's a shift in brain activity. In normal situations, the prefrontal cortex is highly active. It's responsible for logical reasoning, planning, and self-reflection. However, during flow, this control center becomes less active in a process called transient hypofrontality. This is one of the reasons we experience freedom from self-criticism and judgment during flow. It's as if the conscious self takes a step back, allowing other areas of the brain to take over. The chemistry of flow. Dopamine, serotonin, and other neurochemicals. In the flow state, our brains release a cocktail of neurochemicals that not only make us feel incredible, but also enhance our performance. This includes dopamine, which improves focus and attention, serotonin, which elevates mood, endorphins, which act as natural painkillers, and anandamide, which fosters creativity. This chemical cocktail helps create a sense of euphoria and a nearly superhuman ability to tackle challenges and solve problems which is crucial in a complex and dynamic sport like jiu-jitsu. The time factor. Why does everything seem to slow down? Have you ever had the feeling that time seems to slow down during an intense roll? This is another common feature of flow, and neuroscience has some explanations for it. One theory is that, since more regions of your brain are engaged in the task at hand, you're processing information at a much faster rate. This alters subjective time, or how you experience time, making it seem to change. Neural plasticity, flow aids in accelerated learning. 
Another neuroscientific benefit of the flow state is what it does for your ability to learn. The release of certain neurotransmitters during flow enhances neural plasticity, your brain's ability to form new connections. This means you're not only executing movements better in the moment, but also programming your brain to be more efficient in the future. Conclusion The flow state is not just a feel-good sensation or an ideal mental state. It's a complex neurobiological process that enhances your performance, speeds up your learning, and makes the experience more rewarding. Understanding what is happening in your brain during these moments can not only help you enter flow more easily, but also make the most of this transformative experience. So, now that you have a deeper understanding of the neuroscience behind flow, you're armed with yet another tool to enhance your jujitsu and your life. Until the next class, and remember, the brain is your greatest ally on the mat. Chapter 5 The Trigger The Balance Between Challenge and Skill The Sweet Spot for Flow Hello again, jiu-jitsu practitioners and enthusiasts. In our exploration of the flow state, we've arrived at a critical topic that is often misunderstood, but could be the key to unlocking flow consistently. I'm talking about the delicate balance between challenge and skill, the trigger that gets us into that magical state. The golden rule. Not too much, not too little. Imagine sparring with someone completely inexperienced. The challenge is so low that you end up feeling bored. Now, picture rolling with a world-famous black belt. The challenge is so high that you become overwhelmed. In both scenarios, flow is elusive. There's a sweet spot where the challenge you face is just slightly above your current skills. It's in this space that flow occurs. Csikszentmihalyi's Flow Theory Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, the psychologist who coined the term flow, crafted a model describing this relationship. According to him, when your skills surpass challenges, you feel bored. When challenges surpass your skills, you feel anxious. The balance is where your skills and challenges meet harmoniously. This is pivotal, as it activates a kind of positive feedback loop. The challenge keeps you engaged, while your skills give you the confidence to face that challenge. Know thyself. Personal assessment to find the sweet spot. To find this sweet spot, an honest self-assessment is required. Where are your skills right now? What challenges do you find stimulating yet manageable? In the jiu-jitsu context, this might mean choosing training partners who are challenging but not overwhelming, or focusing on specific aspects of your technique that are on the cusp of your current understanding, pinpointing areas of techniques you can enhance. The evolution of the sweet spot, a moving target. The beauty and complexity of this balance are that it's always shifting. As your skills grow, the level of challenge needed to induce flow also rises. This is what keeps jujitsu masters engaged for decades. The flow sweet spot is a moving target, ever evolving. The importance of self tuning. At times, the fine-tuning needed to find this sweet spot might be subtle. Perhaps you need to add a constraint to your game to elevate the challenge level, like rolling using only certain positions or techniques. Or maybe you need to take a step back and hone your fundamentals to better align your skills with the challenges you're facing. Conclusion Understanding the balance between challenge and skill is more than just a strategy for tapping into flow. It's an approach for personal growth and mastery. It's a roadmap that can assist us on our ongoing journey of learning and achievement, both on the mat and in life. So the next time you step onto the mat, seek that balance. You'll find that flow isn't some mystical thing reserved for the chosen. 
but an accessible state attainable through self-awareness and careful tuning of the challenges you opt to face. Until the next class, where we'll continue exploring the intriguing nuances of flow. Stay tuned. Chapter 6 Flow and Jiu-Jitsu A Match Made in Heaven The Nexus Between Martial Art and Mindset Hello, everyone. Here we are again in our course on Flow Jiu-Jitsu Training System. Today, I want to talk about a subject that is very close and dear to my heart, the symbiotic relationship between Jiu-Jitsu and the flow state. You may or may not have felt this connection yet, but today you will understand why Jiu-Jitsu and flow are genuinely a match made in heaven, or rather, on the mat. Jiu-Jitsu a human chess game. Jiu-jitsu is often likened to a human game of chess. Every move has a counter-move. Every action has a reaction. This real-time game of strategy and physical skill provides fertile ground for flow, as it keeps us utterly engaged in the moment. In jiu-jitsu, a momentary lapse of focus can result in being submitted. Hence, the need for complete focus is absolute. Flow state, a natural state on the mat. If you've been lucky enough to experience flow while practicing jujitsu, you know it's something special. Time seems to stop. The complexity of techniques appears to simplify. Your mind and body operate in perfect harmony. It's no coincidence that many jujitsu practitioners talk about the Zen state they reach during intense sparring or competition. It's flow in its purest form. Immediate feedback loops. Jiu-jitsu is unique among sports and martial arts for its immediate feedback loops. You try a technique and you instantly know if it worked or not. This immediacy not only facilitates rapid learning, but also contributes to entering and sustaining the flow state. After all, one of the prerequisites for flow is receiving continuous feedback on your performance. The autotelic nature of jujitsu. The term autotelic refers to activities that are intrinsically rewarding. Jujitsu, for many of us, is autotelic. We don't need external rewards to find value in practice. The very act of rolling and improving is reward enough. This is a potent facilitator of flow, which is also often described as intrinsically rewarding. The constant challenge. As we discussed before, flow occurs when challenge and skill are in balance. Jiu-jitsu, with its almost endless depth of techniques and strategies, always offers a challenge commensurate with your skills, no matter how far you advance. This makes jiu-jitsu a perfect partner in the ongoing pursuit of the flow state. Conclusion Jiu-jitsu is not just a martial art or a sport. It's a training ground for the mind and spirit. The flow state, in turn, is not just an ephemeral mental state, but a state of being, a manifestation of your full human potential. Together, they offer a two-way street for personal growth and excellence. And that, my friends, is why flow and jiu-jitsu make a truly perfect match. Until the next class, keep seeking flow in every aspect of your practice on the mat and beyond. It's a journey worth every drop of sweat. See you soon. Chapter 7 Setting Aside Prejudices The Art of Open-Mindedness in the journey of jiu-jitsu and flow. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our course on the training system, Flow Jiu-Jitsu. Today, I want to address a topic that is vital to your evolution in both the art of jiu-jitsu and mastering flow. The importance of setting aside your prejudices. The obstacle of prejudices. We all carry a baggage of prejudices, whether we admit it or not. Perhaps it's a belief that certain techniques are unorthodox 
and therefore unworthy of our time. Or maybe a view that only people of a certain athleticism or age can achieve high levels in any discipline. These prejudices may be subtle, but they are chains that bind us. Prejudice and ego. Many of us step onto the mat with an ego that thinks it knows what to expect. Ah, uh, it's just a white belt. This will be easy. Or, that technique looks too complicated to be effective. The moment we let these thoughts dictate our approach, we close ourselves off to learning and to flow. The ego is a silent killer of the flow state. The Beginner's Mind In Zen Buddhism, there is a concept known as Shoshin, or the beginner's mind, which involves approaching life with openness, curiosity, and lack of prejudice, much like a beginner or a child. By adopting this mindset in Jiu-Jitsu, we open ourselves to the state of flow. The beginner's mind is a blank canvas, ready to be painted with the colors of experience and knowledge. The Power of Humility Humility is not just a virtue, it's a practical tool. When we are humble, we are more willing to set aside our prejudices and accept that there is always something new to learn, something new to try. And it's this kind of openness that allows us to more easily enter the state of flow. When you are open, you are present, and being present is the key to flow. Jiu-Jitsu as a mirror of the mind Jiu-Jitsu has a way of reflecting our own mental limitations. If you are closed off to new experiences, it will show on the mat. If you are open and free from prejudices, that will also be evident. Techniques can be learned, but mindset is what really sets great martial artists apart. When I first stepped onto the mat, I was full of expectations, doubts, and of course, nervousness. At that moment, I had no idea how this martial art would become such a transparent reflection of my mindset. In every fight, every move, and every decision, I saw aspects of my personality and mindset emerge in ways I had never seen before. Mental Limitations The Invisible Handcuffs Fear of Failure The fear of failing can make us overly cautious, causing us to miss opportunities for effective finishes or defenses. Lack of Openness to Learning When we are resistant to new techniques or strategies, this mindset manifests on the mat. You ignore certain techniques because you think they aren't for you, but often it's your closed mind that is limiting your ability. Open Mindset, the key to mastery. Curiosity and Humility Great martial artists are eternal students. They are driven by an insatiable curiosity and are always open to learning, whether from a master or a beginner. Free from Prejudices Having an open mind on the mat means not making hasty judgments about techniques, styles, or even opponents. This not only enriches your training experience, but also allows you to more easily enter the state of flow. Developing Mindset Through Jiu-Jitsu Mental Training Just as we train our body, we can train our mind to be more adaptable, more focused, and less prejudiced. Techniques of mindfulness, meditation, and even personal mantras can be useful here. Continuous Feedback The mat offers instant feedback. If you are being resistant or stubborn, you will be punished for it during sparring. Use these moments as opportunities to adjust your mindset. Conclusion Jiu-Jitsu is not just a series of techniques and moves. It's a journey of self-discovery. Your mindset, whether limited by fears and prejudices or expanded by curiosity and openness, will be reflected back to you every time you step onto the mat. And the most beautiful thing is that mindset 
can be trained and altered. Remember that you are entering a space that is as much a laboratory for the body as it is for the mind. Setting aside prejudices is not just about being a better person. It's about being a better, more effective jujitsu practitioner. It's about allowing the state of flow to flourish in your practice and in your life. It's a continuous journey that requires constant vigilance, but the fruits of this labor are extraordinarily rewarding. So, remember to untie the knots of prejudices you may be carrying. Believe me, the mat is far more rewarding when we approach it with an open and free mind. Chapter 8 The Relevance of Taoism and Buddhism Beyond Religion Toward Understanding the Mind Hello once again. I hope you've been enjoying the journey so far. In the previous chapter, we explored the wondrous world of flow. Now, let's delve deeper into two ancient philosophies that have much to teach us about the human mind, Taoism and Buddhism. Setting Prejudices Aside The first thing I want to clarify is that we're not approaching Taoism and Buddhism as religions, but as systems for profound understanding of the human mind and the nature of reality. Both philosophies offer exceptional tools for understanding how the mind functions, which can be a valuable contribution for any jujitsu instructor interested in helping their students achieve a state of flow. My first experience with Taoism. A few years ago, I came across the Taoist concept of Wu Wei, often translated as non-action or effortless action. I was fascinated. I began applying this principle in my training and fights, and something incredible happened. I became less tense, more fluid, and it seemed like I was letting things happen instead of forcing them. It was revelatory. Buddhism and mindfulness. Buddhism introduced me to the concept of mindfulness or full attention. I began practicing this simple technique of being fully present, observing my actions, my breathing, and even my thoughts. I noticed that my ability to enter flow improved when I was genuinely present. This not only elevated my performance, but also brought a sense of peace and clarity, both on and off the mat. The connection with flow. What Taoism and Buddhism have in common is a focus on the mind and the way we perceive and interact with the world. Both philosophies offer methods for achieving states of mental clarity, tranquility, and intensified focus, which are crucial components for attaining the state of flow. So, why is this important for you? Imagine being able to teach your students to fight more efficiently and effectively, not through brute force, but through a deeper understanding of themselves and their own minds. Imagine a room full of jujitsu practitioners who are not just physically engaged, but also mentally and emotionally. This is what you can achieve by incorporating the principles of Taoism and Buddhism into your teaching. Conclusion So, dear friend and colleague, we're about to embark on a fascinating journey through the intertwined paths of ancient philosophies and modern training techniques. And I have a feeling you're going to love where this takes us. Are you ready for the next step of this adventure? Let's go. Chapter 9 Introduction to Taoism The Principle of Wu Wei How Non-Action Can Be the Best Action on the Mat Hello, warriors. In our last class, we talked about the enigmatic state of flow and how it can transform your experience on the mat. Today, we will navigate the tranquil waters of Taoism, focusing on the fascinating concept of Wu Wei, or effortless action. The submission. That never happened. I remember a specific fight I had years ago 
where I was absolutely determined to submit my opponent with an arm lock. The more I forced it, however, the more he resisted. My muscles began to tire, and I lost my position. It was a humbling lesson. Some time later, I encountered the concept of Wu Wei while studying Taoism. That fighting experience came back to mind, and I realized I had tried to force the outcome rather than flowing with the situation. I began to experiment with the idea of not forcing during my training, and the changes were immediate. So, what is Wu Wei? At its core, Wu Wei is the art of non-action, or effortless action. This doesn't mean being lazy or inactive, but rather working with the natural flow of events instead of against them. It's like water flowing in a river. It doesn't force its way. It simply flows and yet has the power to shape rocks. Wu Wei on the mat. Imagine attempting a guard pass, but instead of using brute force, you feel your opponent's energy and flow with it. When they push, you pull. When they pull, you follow. This is Wu Wei in action in Jiu-Jitsu. How to apply Wu Wei on the mat. Feel your opponent's energy. Instead of imposing your will from the get-go, first feel your opponent's energy. This will give you cues on when to advance, retreat, press, or ease up. Flow, don't force. Wu Wei involves a kind of fluidity. When you try a guard pass and feel resistance, don't force it. Instead, shift your focus and see if there's another opening. Harmony with the moment. This is especially relevant during the moments of transition between positions. Instead of rushing to establish a position, become comfortable in the chaos of transitions. This allows you to react more naturally and intuitively. Benefits of Wu Wei in Jiu Jitsu 1. Energy Conservation By not resisting futilely, you conserve energy that could be better utilized in other aspects of your game. 2. Better Decision Making The state of Wu Wei creates a clear mind that is more apt at making effective decisions quickly. 3. Facilitates the flow state. The practice of Wu Wei is intrinsically linked to the flow state. When you are completely in tune with the present moment, entering the flow state becomes much more likely. Wu Wei is a practice and philosophy that can take your jujitsu to a new level. It allows you to move with the flow of combat rather than against it, making each action more effective and every moment on the mat an opportunity for mastery. Next time you are on the mat, try out this concept. Instead of forcing your way through positions and submissions, try to feel what's happening and work with it, not against it. The beauty of Wu Wei is that it does not only apply to jujitsu or sports, but to all areas of life. It is a way of flowing with the universe, not against it. And the best part? It can be the key to accessing the flow state more easily and more frequently. Wu Wei and Flow, Kindred Spirits Wu Wei and Flow are very similar concepts and often overlap. Both speak of a state where you are so immersed in an activity that everything else disappears. The main difference is that Wu Wei involves a sort of detachment that allows things to unfold more organically. In flow, you may be deeply involved in a task, but in Wu Wei, you allow the task to unfold through you, almost as if you were a channel for it. Wu Wei off the mat. Wu Wei is not just a philosophy for jujitsu or martial arts. It's a philosophy for life. If you've ever tried to solve a difficult problem and found that the solution came when you stopped obsessing over it, you've experienced Wu Wei. Wu Wei is one of those concepts that once understood and applied can profoundly change your approach to jujitsu and life. On the mat, 
it can be the key to entering and maintaining the flow state, allowing you to reach levels of performance you never thought possible. In life, it can help you navigate challenges with a calmness and grace that will surprise even you. So, the next time you encounter resistance, whether in a challenging position in jujitsu or a life problem, remember Wu Wei. Breathe, let go, and let action arise naturally. You may be surprised by the results. Chapter 10. Understanding Wu Wei Further, the concept of Wu Wei is, without a doubt, one of the most fascinating and at the same time most misunderstood principles in Taoist philosophy. Literally translated, Wu Wei means not doing or not acting, but this simplistic definition doesn't do justice to the depth and richness that this principle offers. Let's dive deeper. The action that doesn't look like action. The first time you hear about Wu Wei, you might be confused. How can doing nothing be useful on the mat? In reality, Wu Wei is not about inactivity. It's about effortless action, about doing something in a way that feels so natural that it almost seems like nothing was done. It is to act in accordance with the nature of things and in harmony with the flow of the universe. Water and Rock The classic example used to illustrate Wu Wei is that of water flowing over a rock. The water doesn't try to force its way or break the rock. Instead, it flows around it. Over time, this effortless action has the power to erode and shape the rock. Similarly, Wu Wei in Jiu Jitsu is not about using brute force to subdue an opponent, but about understanding and going along with the natural energy of the situation to find an opening or create an opportunity. The Power of Intuition A crucial aspect of Wu Wei is intuition. It's about feeling more and thinking less, which can be tremendously useful during a fight when you don't have time to analyze every detail. When you practice Wu Wei, you connect with a kind of body wisdom that often knows what to do even before your conscious mind realizes it. Wu Wei and the Flow State What's interesting is that Wu Wei and the state of flow are closely linked. Both talk about a kind of synchronicity with what is happening, a harmony that makes everything seem easier. When you're in flow on the mat, you are often unknowingly practicing Wu Wei. You are not acting in the sense that you are so in tune with the moment that your actions arise almost spontaneously, without the need for conscious thought or excessive effort. Wu Wei is not inactivity, but rather a more subtle and powerful form of action. It is the ability to act effectively, but without force, to respond to the present moment with the exact amount of effort and energy needed. And the most beautiful part is that this is not something reserved for masters or sages. It's a principle that we can all learn and apply, both on the mat and in life. Wu Wei on the Mat The Subtle Game of Energy and Movement When it comes to Wu Wei in Jiu Jitsu, we're talking about a kind of intricate dance, a subtle game of push and pull, resist and yield. Imagine you are on the mat, facing an opponent. His hands are on your collar, and he's about to try to pass your guard. This is a crucial moment, and this is where Wu Wei comes into play. Wu Wei, the practice of being water. Bruce Lee once said, Be water, my friend. Water can be soft and fluid, but it can also be strong and impenetrable. It adapts to the container it's in. In jiu-jitsu, being like water is the essence of Wu Wei. If your opponent is a rock, be the river that flows around him. If he is the wind, be the tree that bends but does not break. 
Benefits of Wu Wei in Jiu Jitsu Energy Conservation One of the most immediate benefits of applying Wu Wei on the mat is energy conservation. You're no longer wasting strength in ego battles or tests of force. Better decision making. When you're not overwhelmed trying to force your will, you're more able to see the openings and opportunities that present themselves during a fight. Increased self-awareness. By adopting a Wu Wei approach, you become more aware of your own habits, strengths, and weaknesses because you are more in tune with the present moment. Greater adaptability. The practice of Wu Wei enhances your ability to adapt and change strategy instantly based on what your opponent is doing. Practicing Wu Wei on the mat is not a matter of doing nothing. It is a matter of doing the right thing at the right time, flowing with the situation rather than trying to control it. It is a combination of awareness, timing, and decision that, when mastered, can elevate your jujitsu to an entirely new level. Chapter 11 Buddhism and Mindfulness The Practice of Mindfulness in Jiu-Jitsu and Beyond Hello, dear practitioners and enthusiasts of Jiu-Jitsu. Today we will talk about a theme that has profoundly changed my approach to training and life. Mindfulness, a practice deeply rooted in Buddhism. Buddhism, a tool to understand the human mind. Before we go further, let me clarify that we are approaching Buddhism not as a religion, but as a rich tradition with insights into the human mind. If Taoism gives us the concept of Wu Wei, Buddhism offers us the practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness on the mat. When applied to jujitsu, mindfulness can be a real game changer. Contrary to what many think, Fighting is not just a matter of physical strength and technique. It's also a mental battle. Mindfulness practice can help focus your mind, making you more aware of your movements, your opponent's actions, and even your breathing. Benefits of Mindfulness in Jiu-Jitsu Mental Clarity Mindfulness helps you clear mental noise making it easier for you to focus on the task at hand. Mental clarity is not the absence of thoughts, but the ability to direct your attention in a focused and decisive manner. It's like tuning into a radio station clearly, without interference. In this state, you are more capable of receiving, processing, and acting on real-time information. Attention to the present. Mindfulness teaches you to be fully present, crucial in a dynamic sport like jiu-jitsu, where every second counts. Filtering distractions. By practicing mindfulness, you become better at separating what is relevant from what is not. Thoughts of self-doubt or over-analysis are recognized, but are not allowed to dominate you. Self-awareness. With a clear mind, you are in a better position to understand your own thought patterns, feelings, and reactions, invaluable both in training and competition. Practicing Mindfulness for Mental Clarity Conscious Breathing Dedicate a few minutes before or after training to focus on your breath. Inhale deeply through the nose, hold for a few seconds, and exhale completely through the mouth. Meditation. It doesn't have to be complicated. Even five minutes a day can make a big difference. The goal is simply to observe your thoughts without judgment, bringing your attention back to your breath whenever it wanders. Upon entering the mat, have a clear intention for that day's training. It can be something as simple as Today I will focus on takedown defense. This helps align your mind and body toward a common goal, creating a form of directed clarity. Mental clarity through mindfulness 
is a skill that can be cultivated and improved like any jujitsu technique. And like any well-executed technique, it has the power to transform your game completely. Best Response to Stress With a focused mind, you can better react under pressure, making more informed and calculated decisions during the fight. When we are under stress, our body enters fight-or-flight mode, diverting resources for quick reactions. A focused mind helps exit this state, allowing for more calculated decision-making. In a state of focus, we are more aware of our surroundings and can process information more quickly and accurately. This is vital in sports like jiu-jitsu, where understanding your opponent's position and intent can be the key to victory. When you are focused, you are less likely to be dragged down by emotions like frustration, anger, or fear, which can be extremely counterproductive in a fight. Just like you train your body, train your mind. Dedicating regular time to mindfulness practice can help you maintain focus in stressful situations. Pressure Simulation During training, create scenarios that simulate the stress of competition or fighting. This could include sparring rounds with intentional disadvantages, timers with reduced time, or even training while your team watches. After each training or competition, take a moment to reflect on how you handled stress. Identify triggers and emotional responses and think about how you can improve. Stress is inevitable, whether on the mat or in life. But with the right tools and training, you can transform stress from a formidable enemy into just another opponent you're prepared to face. Increased self-awareness. Constant practice of mindfulness on the mat can reveal a lot about yourself, your patterns, tendencies, strengths, and weaknesses. There was a period in my jiu-jitsu journey where I felt stagnant. My techniques weren't improving, and my opponents always seemed to be one step ahead. I started paying more attention to my thoughts, feelings, and reactions during each training session. What I discovered was surprising. I had tendencies I was not aware of. For example, I always dodged to the same side when pressured, making me predictable. This deeper level of self-awareness became a source of continual growth for me. When we are in elevated states of attention, we start noticing patterns in our behavior that may be harming us. It could be a tendency to retreat under pressure or a habit of losing posture in critical moments. Understanding Strengths and Weaknesses Enhanced self-awareness allows us honest analysis of our abilities. Instead of avoiding our weaknesses, we can directly address them, and this starts with recognition. Emotional Intelligence Understanding our own emotions is crucial for maintaining control during a fight. Self-awareness allows us to identify and label our emotions, making them easier to manage. Techniques to Increase Self-Awareness 1. Training Diary Keep a diary of your experiences on the mat. After each session, write about what you felt, how you reacted, and what techniques worked or failed. The practice of writing helps solidify these observations and makes it easier to identify patterns over time. 2. Conscious Feedback After sparring or competition, take a moment to reflect internally and, if possible, discuss with your training partner or coach. An external perspective can provide valuable insights that you might have missed. 3. Focused Meditation Instead of a general mindfulness practice, try focused meditations that explore specific aspects of your behavior, like your reaction to failure or success. Self-awareness is not just about self-knowledge, but also about self-transformation. It's a tool that not only improves your effectiveness on the mat, 
but also enriches your life outside it. 4. Injury Prevention A mindful mind is more in tune with the body. You're less likely to make careless movements that could lead to injuries. When we are fully aware, we are more attuned to the sensations in our bodies. This allows us to pick up on subtle signals, such as muscle fatigue or a movement that doesn't feel right before they turn into more serious issues. Mindful practice also teaches us the importance of minimalism in movements. The more efficient and controlled your movement, the lower the risk of injury. Mindfulness can help reduce muscle tension. Tense muscles are more prone to injuries, so learning to relax can be a lifesaver. Techniques for mindfulness in injury prevention. 1. Body scan. Before and after training, perform a mental body scan to assess any areas of tension or discomfort. If you detect something, pay special attention to that area during the warm-up and stretching. 2. Mindful warm-up. Instead of going through the warm-up automatically, be fully present. Feel each muscle stretching, each joint moving. 3. Self-regulation. During training, if something doesn't feel right, give yourself permission to pull back. Don't let your ego get in the way of your physical health. Injury prevention is not just about what happens on the mat, but also about what happens in our minds. While mindfulness may not be an absolute guarantee against all injuries, it provides us with an additional line of defense through self-awareness and mind-body attunement. How to incorporate mindfulness into your training? 1. Mindful breathing. Before you start rolling or between rounds, perform a few cycles of deep breathing, focusing entirely on the air entering and exiting your lungs. 2. Body scan. Perform a quick scan of your body from top to bottom, noting any areas of tension or discomfort. 3. Focus on the present. During the fight, bring your attention back to the present moment whenever you notice your mind wandering. Mindfulness practice offers an incredibly useful set of tools that can improve your performance in jujitsu and your quality of life in general. A trained mind can be as sharp as any finishing technique and as powerful as any strike. We'll see each other in the next chapter, where we will combine everything we've learned so far and begin to assemble an integrated system for achieving the flow state in jujitsu. Until then, practice mindfulness both on the mat and off it. See you soon. Chapter 12. Psychological Techniques for Activating Flow. The Mental Path to Excellence in Jiu-Jitsu. Hello again, Warriors of the Mat. In previous lessons, we've talked about concepts like Wu Wei and mindfulness that offer foundational insights into human psychology. Today, I will share some specific psychological techniques you can use to activate the state of flow that magical moment when everything seems to click in jujitsu. Psychological techniques for activating flow. 1. Clear goal setting. Having a specific aim during training can help focus your mind. It can be something as simple as, I will work on my guard defense today, or I'll try to apply this specific technique. 2. Immediate feedback. This can be as simple as being aware of when you've done something right or wrong. Immediate feedback helps you adjust your performance in real time, allowing you to remain in the flow state. 3. Challenge versus Skill Maintain a balance between the difficulty of the task and your ability to perform it. If the task is too easy, you'll get bored. If it's too difficult, you'll get frustrated. Balance is key. 4. Elimination of distractions. This includes both external and internal distractions. 
a cluttered mind or noisy environment can impair your ability to enter the flow state. Practice mindfulness to clear your mind and aim to train in an environment conducive to focus. 5. Visualization Before stepping onto the mat or even between rounds, visualize yourself performing the techniques flawlessly. This prepares your mind and body for what's to come, making it easier to transition into the flow state. A practical example. Imagine you're about to roll with an opponent who you know has a very strong guard game. Instead of getting carried away by anxiety, you can set a clear goal. Today, I will focus on passing his guard. Seek immediate feedback. With each attempt, observe what worked and what didn't. Adjust the level of challenge. If you find it too easy, try a more complex passing technique. If it's hard, simplify your approach. Eliminate distractions. Before starting, close your eyes for a moment and take a deep breath, focusing on the present. Visualize. Imagine yourself passing your opponent's guard smoothly and effectively. Activating the flow state is not something that happens by chance. It's something you can cultivate. By applying these psychological techniques, you will be well on your way to experiencing more flow moments in your training and perhaps even in your life off the mat. In the next lesson, we'll discuss how to maintain the flow state so that you can prolong these moments of pure connection and excellence. Until then, keep your mind sharp and your spirit fierce. See you on the mat. Chapter 13 Taoist and Buddhist Techniques for Activating Flow The Convergence of Ancient Philosophies with Modern Jiu-Jitsu Hello, Jiu-Jitsu warriors. If you have already incorporated some of the psychological techniques we've discussed for entering the flow state, you're ready to take the next step. Today, we'll explore how the teachings of Taoism and Buddhism can be practically applied to help you achieve and maintain this desired state of excellence on the mat. My experience with Taoism and Buddhism in Jiu-Jitsu. I must confess that initially, I was somewhat skeptical about how such ancient philosophies could assist me in something as physical and competitive as Jiu-Jitsu. But when I began to study the principles and practices, I quickly realized the richness of these philosophies. Every day on the mat, I found parallels between ancient wisdom and my own experience as a fighter. Recapping the Concepts Wu Wei, the art of non-doing to activate flow. We've seen earlier how the Taoist concept of Wu Wei is about acting in accordance with the natural flow of things. But how does this apply to Jiu-Jitsu? Adjust and readjust. Instead of imposing your will and strength, adapt to the movements of your opponent. This doesn't mean being passive. It means being like water, flowing and adjusting as needed. Detachment from outcome. Instead of focusing on winning at all costs, focus on the process and the experience of the moment. This frees your mind to enter the flow state more easily. Mindfulness, the Buddhist secret to sustaining flow. As we discussed earlier, Buddhism offers the valuable gift of mindfulness. Attention to the now. Use mindfulness to remain fully present during each moment of training or fighting. This helps to maintain the flow state once you're in it. Body awareness. Practicing mindfulness during training also enhances your awareness of how your body moves and reacts, which is crucial for improving and sustaining the flow state. Practical Techniques to Implement Wu Wei and Mindfulness Conscious Breathing Use breathing as a bridge between Wu Wei and mindfulness. Focus on your breath to enter flow and maintain that focus to stay in it. Body Scan on the Mat 
perform a quick mental scan of your body to check for tension and adjust your posture, especially during moments of high effort or stress. Flow Journal Keep a training journal where you note when and how you entered the flow state and which techniques or approaches helped induce that state. This will help you better understand what facilitates your personal flow. Conclusion Taoism and Buddhism offer more than just spiritual philosophies or moral principles. They offer mental techniques and principles that can be very practically applied to improve your jujitsu and your life as a whole. By incorporating Wu Wei and mindfulness into your training, you can not only activate but also sustain the flow state, transforming yourself into a more present, more adaptable, and ultimately more effective fighter. Chapter 14 Cultivating Emotional Intelligence in Jiu-Jitsu, A Journey of Self-Awareness In the intricate world of Jiu-Jitsu, where movements are calculated, technique is refined, and strategy is everything, one often neglected but immensely powerful aspect emerges. Emotional Intelligence Understanding our own emotions forms the foundation of a journey towards self-mastery and excellence. Emotional Intelligence Understanding our own emotions is crucial for maintaining control during a fight. Imagine yourself at the center of the mat, eyes fixed on the opponent, heart racing, mind prepared. Beyond physical technique, our ability to understand and manage our emotions will determine our performance. Emotional intelligence is the beacon that illuminates the path to self-mastery. Self-awareness allows us to identify and label our emotions, making them easier to manage. Self-awareness is the first step in this journey. It invites us to look inward, to probe the depths of our emotions. Identifying anxiety before a fight, recognizing excitement, understanding frustration, this not only puts us in control but also empowers us to transform these emotions into allies. When we say we are masters of our feelings, we must remember that the ability to label and understand our emotions gives us the power of choice. We are able not only to recognize when anxiety tries to overwhelm us, but also to choose not to let it dictate our performance. We are able to confront frustration with resilience and find focus amidst excitement. At the core of this journey is the understanding that emotions need not be enemies. On the contrary, they are indicators of our inner state. When we understand them, we open doors to managing them in a healthy and productive way. Try to see the fight not just as a physical battlefield, but as an emotional laboratory. Each confrontation is an opportunity to practice self-mastery, to learn about ourselves, and to grow not just as fighters, but as human beings. So, when we find ourselves on the mat, facing the challenge and seeking victory, let us remember, emotional intelligence is the invisible thread that connects our mind and body, enabling us to flow with emotions transforming them from obstacles into springboards. The journey of self-discovery begins within us, and in jiu-jitsu, as in life, emotional mastery is the foundation that elevates our journey to extraordinary levels. In the next lesson, we will put all these pieces together to form a complete system that you can use to consistently achieve the flow state on the mat. Stay tuned! Chapter 15. Practical Methodology for Teachers Creating a Conducive Environment for Flow on the Mat Hello, Jiu-Jitsu teachers and instructors. So far, our course has largely focused on helping the individual enter the flow state. Now, we're shifting our focus to you, the teachers, who have the critical task of creating a training environment 
that facilitates flow for all your students. The transformative experience of teaching flow. I still remember the first time I implemented flow techniques in a class I was teaching. It may sound cliche, but I literally saw eyes lighting up, students moving with a fluidity I had never seen before. I realized I was somehow making the incomprehensible accessible to them. And this is exactly what I hope you will do. The Symphony of Brain Synchronization Exploring the Importance of Tuning Between Students In the world of jujitsu, each movement is a note in a symphony of techniques and strategies. However, something even more powerful than the individual execution of complex movements is the brain synchronization that occurs when all students are tuned into the same action. Just as the beat of a drum unifies a group of musicians, brain synchronization unites a class of jujitsu practitioners. We face an inspiring lesson brought to life through the studies of neuroscientist Miguel Nicolelis. He shows us that when multiple minds come together in a common activity, their brains begin to dance in harmony. This brain synchronization goes beyond mere coordinated movements. It's a phenomenon that propels collective performance to extraordinary levels. Imagine a jujitsu training room where students prepare for a series of synchronized movements. Each individual melds into a harmonious unit. What happens here is far deeper than mere physical alignment. Students' brains begin to pulse at a similar frequency, creating an invisible connection that transcends technique. This brain synchronization is not just a scientific curiosity, but also a powerful tool for practice enhancement. When everyone is on the same page, a wave of collective energy emerges. Training becomes more effective, techniques flow more naturally, and a sense of belonging to the community intensifies. Miguel Nicolelis's studies reveal that when synchronized brains work together, the collective mind elevates to a state of greater cooperation and creativity. Individual limits dissolve giving way to dynamic collaboration. This collaboration is not just physical. It's a fusion of intentions, an echo of individual energies that blend and amplify. So the next time you're on the mat, observe the beauty of brain synchronization happening before your eyes. Each technique taught, each sequence executed, contributes to a unique brain dance. Be aware that when all students are in tune, something greater than the sum of their parts manifests. It's the orchestra of the mind, creating a spectacle of harmony and learning that transcends the mat and echoes in everyday life. United by counting, brain synchronization in group warm-up. Imagine a jujitsu dojo where students gather at the beginning of class to perform the warm-up. Everyone is positioned in straight lines, ready to start. The instructor gives the signal, and in perfect sync, the students begin the exercises, counting in sequence. It may seem like just a typical warm-up, but beneath the surface, something magical is happening. Brain synchronization. In this scenario, each movement is executed in unison, and the rhythmic counting creates a cadence that connects students' minds. The repetition of the same movement pattern, accompanied by collective counting, causes the brains to oscillate at a similar frequency. It's as if everyone is tuning their minds to the same radio station, creating a symphony of coordinated thoughts and actions. As each student performs the same movement simultaneously, their attention unites. The focus on counting when it's their turn and performing the movements simultaneously creates an invisible bond. What happens is a sort of cognitive harmony where brain waves begin to echo in similar patterns, generating a sense of unity and collaboration. 
Beyond the obvious physical benefit of the warm-up, this practice of brain synchronization brings numerous advantages. First, it creates a sense of community and cohesion among the students. When you move in concert with other people, you're not just exercising, you're contributing to something bigger, a shared experience. Secondly, this brain synchronization in the warm-up prepares the mind for the upcoming lesson. Minds are sharp. Brains are in tune, ready to absorb the techniques that will be taught. The group mindset established during the warm-up sets a mental state conducive to learning and practice. Lastly, this practice can serve as a powerful metaphor for life in general. The brain synchronization that occurs during the warm-up reminds us that although each of us is an individual, we can achieve greater things when we are in tune with others. We learn that our strength increases when we unite, when our minds and hearts pulse as one. So the next time you find yourself in the dojo, participating in this group warm-up, recognize the magic of brain synchronization happening. Each count is an invisible link that unites minds. Each shared movement is a step towards harmony. The group warm-up is not just physical preparation. It's a celebration of the unity of minds, a tribute to the beauty of synchronization that transcends movements and extends to the essence of jujitsu and life.